a picture frame, whatever size you would like. And this was on sale for $2.25, and it's all wood, and it has glass. Okay, I've taken the glass out, and I'm going to put this somewhere safe. I have had my husband um, cut a piece of wood, 8 by 10, and it's going to fit inside here. And right now it looks like that, but it's going to look wondrous in a little bit. And you see there is a hole. Now I've what I've got to do is remove this tape and I've got to sand this stuff off, get it smooth. And I've got to do a little bit of sanding on this end. And I've got to clean up around this hole. And then this gets covered with paper. Okay, now I've sanded this all down and it doesn't need to be super super fancy done you know really really good perfect at least this one doesn't because I'm gonna cover it over with paper now what I wanted to do is you see these little areas are all like right here the splinters stick up and and I didn't want to be poked with daggers and I didn't want to be digging splinters out of my fingers either as I work so that's the reason why I sanded this off, to get those rough edges off. I took pictures of some of my husband's tools. I took them. I took my uh, plug-in drive, USB drive, to Walmart, to the photo department and had them print those photos out. And one of the other options that I had was to put those photos together into a collage on an 8x10. And I thought this turned out totally cool. I mean, this is a whole lot better than any of those individual photos. And it will fit on my 8 by 10 board here. Now I'm going to use Mod Podge and this one is glass gloss luster but you aren't going to be able to see it and I'm just going to put it all over this board. Okay, so gobs of this stuff. A good gloppy mess. Now this will take quite a bit because it will soak into the pores of the wood. Unless of course you put a sealer of some kind on first, but then you've got to let that dry. Let the sealer dry before you put this on. Now I'm putting on a lot because I want to be able to move this photograph around where I want it without damaging the photograph because I only had I only printed one. Make sure your oh crap Zoid. Make sure your fingers are glue free before you start handling the photograph. Or at least the hand that that will be holding the photograph is glue free sure you get the glue to all of the outside edges so you don't have any of those working their way up. Okay, now to put this on. Now this is why I wanted both surfaces wet so that I can move it. I can move it around where I want it. 
if you only do one surface then sometimes you don't uh, sometimes when you put it on it'll stick whoa yes I have a mess in here big 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 mess but I'm making progress okay clean up any glue any Mod Podge or whatever you're using clean it up from the edges so you're not going to smear it on your photo now use a brayer to press the photograph or if you're covering this with some of your favorite paper use a brayer to get the bubbles and things out and as you squeeze on it with the brayer you will have glue that hooks out so just make sure you wipe up wipe up the glue that squeezes out I've got a microfiber cloth I have got splotches of glue from from using the brayer now I have got this slightly damp it's not soaking wet just slightly damp and where I see the glue I'm going over the photos to clean that off I got all the excess glue cleaned off and okay, this is what it will sort of look like. Only sort of. Now I got to work on the frame. Before I go on to the next part, I need to make a hole in the photograph and I'm doing this from the back side and I'm going to use a uh, one of these things and I'm going to cut a plus sign or an X clean the glue off so I don't transfer that to the front after I've done all that work all right now I've made a mark right there so I'm just gonna go through and poke that all the way through and then probably ought to make a few more so I don't tear it. I mean something that I can poke in there. Now there is still some glue inside that hole these two stick in here okay. all right now I've got it stuck through the hole this will allow
my clockwork piece to come through from the back. All right, now this frame, this wooden frame, has already been finished. There's a varnish like on it. Just on the front side, not on the back. So I'm going to use some black acrylic paint and I'm going to paint the entire frame black. Just going to start by squeezing it on. And my brush, this is the one from my glue that I was using. It's a little damp. So I'm going to use it to smear this black paint and I want to get it inside the frame and in all of these little flutes and grooves and stuff. This first coat is not uh, perfection. It's just getting it on there. Okay, <clears throat> this is the first coat and you can see it's not perfect. It's not covered over really good. There, there are splotches and that's all right. As soon as this dries, as soon as this coat dries, then I'll give it a second coat. I have these little booklets that are called Artsy, they're made by Artsy Collage, and this one is poster stamps and labels. And I have four of these. One's Nature. They have a bunch of little things you cut out, and put on tags or put on put on your scrap of pages or whatever whatever you're going to do with them but this is going to be a mechanic themed so I'm going to look through and find pieces that have cars And these two pages are all car related. Automobiles. So I'm just going to cut these out. First I'm just going to do a rough cut just to get it out of there. And then I'll I'll get more fancy. Let's see. I'm just going to go ahead and take this page out. Well, all right. <clears throat> I'm going to use these, so I'm going to cut these out. This is test fitting the pieces that I cut out. I've got my photo there on the wood. And uh, the name of the name of our mechanics business is GNS Auto. These are chipboard letters that were in the uh, the sale bin or whatever from Stampin' Up before I went out in May, whenever, February or March I bought them. So anyway, they're chipboard letters. They're a, they're a good thickness. So I'm going to have to find some paper to cover them with or paint them. But these are those collage pieces from that little booklet. I, I think first I'm going to have to do some of this rub and buff 
got to put some gold or gold color on. So I'm going to do that first and then I'll get these things put down. All right. So just just a little squeeze, a little squirt on your finger. And then just put it on. Okay, a little rub and buff. Takes the harshness of the solid black and makes it look just a little bit different. A little bit more masculine. Now it's time to put these things on. What I'm going to do is just put glue, uh, oh, Mod Podge, on the back sides of these and on the front, I guess. and press it down. Alright, this one I'm going to have to work with a little. Okay, I've got them on. I've glued them on. And then next, I need to go over all of this with a coat of Mod Podge to make sure that these stick down. And of course, then this has got to be shiny. So I'm going to need to go wash my hands to get the old stuff off. So I don't transfer the old gookie onto the new gookie. When you purchase the clock pieces, there will be instructions on the back how to assemble this thing. And I thought that everything had not come in the set. I thought I was going to be missing stuff. You get the hands. The hands come in the package. And then this thing comes like this. Well, the this little piece here is indicated in the instructions right there. And then the nut and the washer and the nut they are put on down here. So you have to unscrew them. So you might think that you don't have all the pieces, but you do in fact have them. This is the first time I've ever done a clock thing, so I, I didn't know what I was doing. But everything is here. Now, I have to send this on to 
my Mr. Fix-It because now he's got to put the gizzies in here that will hold this in. So now it's time to hand this off to the next person.